Hello, and welcome to Worship with St. Paul's United Methodist Church of Mendota Heights, Minnesota. I'm Amy Jo Burr, the pastor of St. Paul's, and I welcome you to join our congregation in worship today. It's the tradition at St. Paul's that on the second Sunday of every month, we have kids together worship, and our children and our youth join us in worship leadership. So you'll notice some of our young people joining in to lead prayers and to read scriptures today during our service of worship. Before we begin with prayer, I have just a few words of announcement. The first is that in addition to this video worship service in which you're participating, there is also in-person worship at St. Paul's in our sanctuary every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. There's also in-person Sunday school for our children and youth at 9.30 a.m. on Sunday mornings, and you are welcome to join us. During the month of February, we are celebrating I Love to Read Month at St. Paul's. And today's special book that we are reading is The Little Things by Christian Trimmer. In addition to this book by Christian Trimmer, on today's theme of kindness, if you want to read more, some other children's storybooks that we love on the themes of kindness are The Kindness Quilt by Nancy Elizabeth Wallace, Berenstein Bears, Kindness Counts, and Nico and Lola, Kindness Shared Between a Boy and a Duck. Finally, please mark your calendars for the date of May 1st. On May 1st, we will have a special celebration of our refreshed and updated sanctuary at St. Paul's with an updated sound and video system as well as aesthetic updates. Please make plans to join us as we celebrate the updates to our sanctuary. And now let us begin our worship service with prayer together. God, our mother and father, we come to you as children. Be with us as we learn to see one another with new eyes. Hear one another with new hearts and treat one another in a new way. Our first hymn is I Will Call Upon the Lord. Please join in with the singing. I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. I will call upon the Lord. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. I will call upon the Lord. Today's Bible memory verse is from Ephesians 4.32. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Now you say it with me. 
Be kind and compassionate to one another. And just to make sure we get it in our memories, let's say it one more time together. Be kind and compassionate to one another. From Ephesians 4.32. Good morning! Today we are talking about kindness and we are going to read The Little Things by Christian Trimmer. Published by Abrams Books for Young Readers. A little girl who much preferred the look of three pigtails to two and who loved the way wet sand squished between her toes walked down the dock the day after a mighty storm. There on the beach were thousands of sea stars washed ashore by the violent waves. She raced to one and tossed it back into the ocean. She quickly picked up another and another and another, ushering each back into the safety of the water. Just then an old man who had the habit of misplacing his glasses and who also loved the way wet sand squished between his toes, came by. What are you doing, little girl? he asked. What do you mean, what am I doing? shouted the girl who liked three pigtails and sand between her toes. She also had a strong sense of self. I'm saving these sea stars. I, uh, I was. The old man was taken aback. It's just... There are so many sea stars. What's the point? You won't be able to save them all. Of course I can't save them all, replied the little girl. She carefully tossed another sea star into the ocean. But I saved that one, didn't I? The old man had to admit the little girl had a point. He picked up a sea star and placed it back in the water. Later that day, the old man headed to the animal shelter with his grandson who liked butter on his noodles and brightly colored shoelaces. What are we doing here, Grandpa? asked the little boy. I'm going to rescue a dog, the old man replied. The boy looked around. There were many animals who needed rescuing after the storm. Taking home one dog isn't going to make much of a difference, he said. That may be so, his grandpa replied but it sure will make a difference to this little guy, don't you think? The little boy had to admit his grandpa had a point. The next day, after a lunch of buttered noodles, the boy headed to his neighbor's house. There lived an elderly lady who had once been a professional dancer and who loved butterflies. I'm here to clean up your garden, the little boy said to the elderly lady. The storm had torn up her flower beds and tossed garbage all over her yard. That would be lovely, replied the elderly lady, doing a graceful plie. As the little boy worked, a teenager who listened to classical music very loudly on her headphones and who just couldn't be bothered happened by. Hey, kid, she said, taking off her headphones. What are you doing? I'm cleaning up this lady's yard, he replied. Look around, kid. The storm messed up this whole block. What's the point of cleaning one yard? asked the teenager. Even though the kid was doing a good job. Not that she'd ever say that to him. The elderly lady chimed in. This little boy has done more than just clean my yard, young lady, she said. He has lifted my spirits. You could learn a thing or two from him. The elderly lady had a point, though the teenager would never admit that out loud. Still, she gave the woman a nod and the little boy a high five. The next morning, the teenager packed an extra lunch and gave it to the homeless man outside the coffee shop, even though she knew there were many in need of a meal. Then a little girl with one missing front tooth and another wiggly one took all the money she had received from the tooth fairy and gave it to charity, and she wiggled the other tooth to help it along. The little girl's mom, who made scrumptious cupcakes, gooey brownies, and mouth-watering cookies, along with some equally delicious, 
delicious, gluten-free options, quickly organized a fundraiser, which inspired a young man with a great sense of style and real acting chops to volunteer at the school, which moved a whole class of students to donate they, their time to fix up a house that had been damaged by the storm, which led to more ideas, more generosity, more kindness, and more action. Not too long after that, another storm moved through the town. The next morning, the little girl with three pigtails raced to the end of the dock only to find... The little girl walked up to the old man and gently tapped him on the shoulder. Now do you get it? she asked. The old man did. During the last few weeks, as we prepared for this Kids Together Worship Service on Kindness, I read a wonderful children's storybook called The Kindness Quilt by Nancy Elizabeth Wallace. In this storybook, there is a school for bunnies and the class project is to create a kindness quilt. Each of the bunnies takes a square piece of paper and paints or draws a picture of themselves showing kindness to someone else. And then when they put each square of artwork together on the bulletin board, it grows into a quilt. Now, Lonnie and I were thinking it would be so fun if the children and youth at St. Paul's made our own kindness quilt. So we're going to start one this week at Sunday school. At Sunday school this week, our older children and youth will all have the opportunity to do artwork showing a time when they showed kindness to someone else. And we're gonna start putting those together into a kindness quilt. If you're at home doing video worship right now, we would love to have your artwork for the kindness quilt at St. Paul's too. So just take a square piece of paper and grab any art supplies that you have handy. Think about a time when you showed kindness and draw it out. We hope that our kindness quilt at St. Paul's will grow and grow just like in the storybook. The bunny school had a kindness quilt that grew and grew as the bunnies continued to show kindness to one another. Lonnie and I uh, quickly drew out a few examples just to help us get started thinking. Now, there's not one for everybody. There's just a few examples today, but we wanted to give you a few examples to get you started thinking about times when you've shown kindness. So these are a few examples from our congregation of times when Lonnie and I saw the children and youth behaving with kindness or times we heard about from their friends and family when they showed kindness. Here's a few examples to get us started. Abby helped coach her sister's softball team. Carter shared his Halloween candy with a child who couldn't go trick-or-treating. Maddie feeds and walks the poodles. Katie and Barb clean up from communion. Jay Lynn taught her sister how to do a cartwheel. Sophia led the Lord's Prayer with her brother at church so he wouldn't feel alone. Isaac helps with his baby sister and tells mom I love you every day. Bryn started a kindness club so everyone would have someone to play with. Archer cleans up a park with the scouts. Grant removes invasive species and plants native plants and trees. Ray taught his aunt how to play and lead multiplayer video games. Bryn and James gathered family and friends to pack meals at Feed My Starving Children. 
Maddie shares hand-me-down clothes and room decor with her little cousin. And Alex shows a new student around school and makes friends. These are just a few examples to get us started at St. Paul's. We hope that these begin our project of a kindness quilt. And as our children and youth continue to show kindness, we hope our kindness quilt grows and grows and grows. A scripture reading from Colossians 3, verses 12 and 13. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Doesn't the kindness quilt that the children are making together just make your heart warm? It was a really fun project for me to be involved in. And part of the fun was seeing all the creative ways that our children thought of to show kindness. Kindness to each other, kindness to animals, even kindness to the earth itself. Now, kindness is one of the fruits of the Spirit, which is happy, uncontroversial, and spreads goodwill to all those around us. And so, kindness often can result in joy. Now, in the story that we read to our children today, the one called The Little Things, the acts of kindness spread from person to person, and that multiplied the kindness and goodwill. This is often true and plays out in our daily living, that kindness does result in other kindnesses. It spreads and it can multiply. The folk wisdom on this goes back to the philosopher Sophocles, who is attributed with the quote, kindness begets kindness. Kindness can be simple. You don't have to have specialized training in order to be kind. And even our young children know how to be kind. This is part of what we teach them in teaching the golden rule. You don't have to know the person involved to show kindness to them. In fact, it's sometimes a great joy just to show kindness to a total stranger. As Christians, when we show kindness, it's not about who the other person is or if they're deserving of the kindness. It is because we are kind people. We are simply living out the fruits of the Spirit that are developing within us. Now, I said you don't need specialized training in order to be kind, but there are certain practices in our life which can help us to grow in kindness. If you are wanting to grow in kindness, you simply need to concentrate on being compassionate and observant, looking for those opportunities when you can show kindness. One simple exercise for this is simply to go to a public place and spend 20 minutes just sitting and looking around and looking for opportunities to show kindness. If you do this, kindness opportunities almost always present themselves. Another exercise which helps expand our kindness is keeping a kindness journal. And at the end of the day, writing down your memories of kindness from the day, both kindness that you extended and kindness that was received. The kindnesses that were received help our hearts to have a spirit of gratitude. And those kindnesses which we extended help us to remember the next day to look for more opportunities to show kindness. As I said, um, kindness, like all of the fruits of the Spirit, 
is a natural part of our spiritual growth. And part of that is by recognizing how God shows kindness and forgiveness to us. Now, our second scripture verse today, verse 13, reads, Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against one another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must forgive. Now, forgiveness is definitely a kindness. When someone offers us forgiveness because it's needed, it is received as true kindness. And so it makes sense that the scripture puts these two things together. But kindness can sometimes, the kindness of forgiving can sometimes be a little bit less warm and fuzzy than other kindnesses. It can sometimes be downright difficult. It requires those things mentioned in verse 12, patience and humility in order to offer forgiveness. And yet, as adults, as we grow and become more spiritually mature, we are called to be kind. We are reminded of this, and this is reinforced every time we pray the Lord's Prayer and say the words, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. One of the things that really helps to grow this in our faith is when we look to the example of God and aspire to be godly and forgive as God forgives. Psalm 103.12 reads, As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. This is the great and expansive forgiveness of God. It is a kindness to us, and forgiveness is a kindness we should extend to others. So as adults, I encourage you to lead by example and set an example for our children, looking for opportunities to show kindness to all of the people who you encounter each day and especially to remember to forgive others as we have been forgiven by God's expansive mercy to us. This is the path of Christian discipleship. And as you go about showing kindness, I pray that your life may be filled with kindness extended to you in return. Jesus' hands were kind, hands doing good to all, healing pain and sickness, blessing children small, washing tired feet and saving those who fall. Jesus' hands were kind, hands doing good to all. Take my hands, Lord Jesus, let them work for you. Make them strong and gentle, kind in all I do. Let me watch you, Jesus, till I'm gentle too. Till my hands are kind hands, quick to work for you. Please join us in the community prayer. Words will appear on the screen, and there are motions that we can do to act out the prayer together. Let us pray. 
I put my hands together every evening when I pray. But think of all the ways that I use my hands each day. Each morning, I reach down and tie my little brother's shoes. I clap for our school's ball team. I support them win or lose. I feed my puppies every day and scratch behind their ears. I even raise my hand in class when they need volunteers. Whenever my best friend feels sad, I pat her on the back. She comes to my house after school. I make us each a snack. On weekends, I help mom and dad with little household chores. I help mom fold the laundry. I help dad mop the floors. I stir soup in the kitchen where the needy come to eat. I shake the hands and learn the names of all the friends I meet. God listens as I pray each night. God's hands can ease my cares. Then God works through my hands to answer someone else's prayers. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. One of the ways that we show kindness and compassion to one another is by sharing what we have with those in need. Now the next time that we gather for a Kids Together worship service, it will already be March. And March is Minnesota Food Share Month. During the whole month of March, our congregation will be hosting a food drive to benefit Neighbors Inc and Keystone Food Banks. These two local food banks help us to show kindness by sharing what we have with those in need. If you're looking for a most needed items list, you can find that in the Epistle Newsletter of St. Paul's. And kids, if your parents are able to contribute to the food drive, I bet they would love it if you would go with them on that very special shopping trip to be shared with people who are in need. You can contribute during the month of March to Minnesota Food Share Month, and you can contribute at any time with financial support to the ministries of St. Paul's United Methodist Church. Contributions can be received by check, by cash, by electric funds transfer, and by smartphone giving with the Vanco Mobile Faith Engagement app. All these are ways in which you can contribute financially to support the ministries of St. Paul's United Methodist Church. Thank you all for your generosity towards one another and in support of the ministries of St. Paul's. Let's bless all of the offerings which are being given right now with a prayer of thanksgiving. All of my treasures I joyfully give, the prayers I whisper, the life that I live. My time and my talents, my hands and my heart, God gave me all of these, now I'll do my part. Amen. Refreshed by living waters, renewed by living bread, may we, your sons and daughters, by your own hand be fed. Accept the love we offer, receive the lives we owe, unite. 
delighted in your service, a seat of justice. All are welcome to come to the communion table who wish to live in reconciliation and in peace with God and with their neighbor. It doesn't matter if you're a member of this church or of any church, if God is calling you to receive this holy sacrament today, then you are welcome at the communion table. The prayer of consecration which we pray will bless not only the bread and juice here in the video with me, but also the bread and juice which you hold in your hand. So let us be in a spirit of prayer and pray together. God breathed life into a beautiful world with farmland, mountains, prairies, rivers, streams, and enough food for all. With thanksgiving, we share God's table. God sent us the gift of Jesus, who showed us how to serve one another with loving kindness. God loves each one of us and teaches us to love and show kindness too. With thanksgiving, we share God's table. Jesus called disciples to follow him and brought them to a special upper room where he washed their feet and they shared bread and wine together. With thanksgiving, we share God's table. The Holy Spirit calls us to be kind and compassionate, sharing God's love and sharing an invitation to God's table with all of the world. With thanksgiving, we share God's table. God gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit who transforms this regular bread and juice into God's holy meal to be shared in communion with each other. With thanksgiving, we share God's table. The body of Christ broken for you and for me. The blood of Christ poured out for you and for me for forgiveness of sins. We give thanks for this holy meal of communion. Amen. It's that time. Who remembers the Bible memory verse? Be kind and compassionate to one another. Our final hem is standing on the promises. Words will appear on the screen so all may join in with the singing. my King. Through eternal ages let the praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Savior. Standing, 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 I'm 
May the road rise to meet you. May the wind blow at your back. May the sun shine warmly on your face. May the rain fall softly on your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of God's hand. Amen. Amen.